Yeah, I'm Guy Cuthbert. I'm a data animator. I'm a man with a purpose. Uh, my purpose is to humanize data. So, glad that's amusing. That's good. Um, <laughs> that's the best joke in the whole uh, <laughs> um, I actually, I, I actually get a real buzz out of bringing data to life and helping people to understand what it's telling them. So we work with organizations with the numbers and the words stored in their computer systems, turning those into understanding, a better appreciation of the organization, its people, its customers, its processes, its systems, its opportunities and its issues. Uh, that's what we do. But I didn't know that two years ago. Um, and so I'm gonna tell you a bit of a story about how we got to where we were, how we engaged Watering Can and what the purpose and the values meant for us at the time, and then a bit about where we've gone in the last two years and how purpose and values have really helped our organisation. And I think um, you've heard from two very excellent speakers already. I feel under pressure now to compete or to, to live up to uh, two very good presentations on purpose and values. So, um, winding back, uh, I for my sins was one of the people that Tony talks about suffering uh, Tony's aspirations of growth. I worked for him for uh, quite a, a large period of the early part of my career. I'm a computer scientist by background, and I worked in Tony's uh, software company dealing with him selling uh, dreams to people and me figuring out how to help deliver those. Uh, a few other faces here today uh, have been in that same position. Um, in 2006, I decided to go my own way and set up my own business, uh, software, computer science type stuff, all great stuff. And uh, in 2006, around Easter, about... Uh, about eight years ago, actually, um, I had the first of three seminal moments in, in my uh, working career at, at Atheon. And that was coming across a truly fascinating piece of software, unlike anything I'd ever seen, that completely changed my perception of how people could integrate, sorry, interwork with data, interface with data. Uh, and here was a means of turning big spreadsheets into fun pictures. And it was revelationary. It was something that I'd never seen before. Uh, it completely changed my perspective on what was possible and set me off on a completely different career. So I suppose from that moment I became a data animator. Uh, I didn't know it at the time. The second seminal moment along the, along the, uh, the path uh, of building a small business around me and um, two co-directors and then a couple of employees, five of us, doing quite a good job, doing a number of different things for lots of different people. No real purpose, applying some technology, uh, trying to discover interesting things about people's businesses, any business, anyone who came and talked to us, pretty much small business, we'd say yes to. If we could, if we could make some money out of it, we'd do it. Uh, we had good projects and we had bad projects, and we could, probably couldn't really tell why the good ones were good and why the bad ones were bad, other than we made money on some and lost money on others. Um, but, but we got to a point where um, we, we knew that we were doing something. Uh, we didn't quite know what the name for it was. We came across uh, a chap in a marketing business who, who threw out, as part of a, um, a conversation, the phrase data animator, and that was it. I said, that's what we are. We're a data animator. Fantastic. We're data animators. We're, we're not data scientists. We're not, um, we're not sort of geeks in a cupboard. We're guys who like to turn this into really interesting, interactive, uh, pictorial information that people can engage with and gain understanding from. That's, that's what it is that we do. Um, and we had a reasonably successful business doing exactly that. But we were looking at um, challenges and opportunities and what could we do as a business that would give us growth and how would we turn um, our aspirations and my aspirations in part as a, as a software guy by background into the business we wanted to be. How could we grow? How could we serve more clients, make more profit, um, and um, generally uh, do a better job for more customers. And, and we were contacted by Steve and Tony. Tony and I they go back quite a way. Uh, and they floated this idea of watering can by us, and we thought it was, it, it was interesting. It was worth a, worth a, worth a conversation. We, we've engaged over the years with a number of different external parties, all of whom have offered interesting perspectives and advice, but normally slow drips over a long period. This was a very short and intensive burst of activity from, uh, from Steve and Tony, and uh, very intensive, and to the point of it kind of made my head hurt. Uh, so the first day made my head hurt a lot. 
Um, and what came out really was that we had a team of five people, and I think they were a team, just. Uh, we were pretty much doing the same things the same way, but we had, what, what transpired was we had extremely different ideas of what we were doing and why, uh, despite the fact that we worked in each other's pockets, did an awful lot of uh, projects on client sites together, and I would have thought, and, and certainly expected going into the process, that we knew who we were, uh, and clearly we didn't. We had very different uh, perspectives on who we were as a business, uh, what we were doing, and our motivations were different. And I think when the leadership team realises that, Jack made a reference to this, um, it's, it's quite a, not necessarily a depressing moment, but it's quite an alarming moment that perhaps you're all in this for different things. Um, in the space of about a day, we got to a point where we had re-expressed what we were doing and what we believed in, in a way that all of us could agree to. And actually, it wasn't just that we could agree to it, all three of us felt it was a better expression of what we were trying to do than any of us had come up with individually. And the humanizing data uh, moniker is what came from that. And from a simple, single purpose came a set of values. And for us, uh, that's four values that are really important to everything we do. So we aspire to be innovative. That is, we encourage our people to think differently about the tools they use, the technologies, the processes, but also the way that they interact with customers. That's really important to us, is that people have the freedom to innovate and challenge the way that we do things. But we try and balance that with um, pragmatism. It's very easy in a tech company to get carried away by, I mean particularly, technologies opportunities and um, a pragmatic organisation says there's a limit to this. You know, we want to innovate, but we don't want to innovate past the point of commercial return. We are trying to help our clients solve problems, we're trying to make money, so we need to be pragmatic. So those two work quite nicely for us in terms of balancing a lot of our decision making and the emphasis that we place on our, uh, our people and the kind of projects we engage with and the clients we work with. Uh, we then have two, uh, two additional values that go alongside those. The first is uh, robustness. So we deliver a robust service to our clients. We're robust in our communication with clients. That is, we're honest and uh, honest. Uh, sorry, I was going to try and avoid saying honest. Um, I'll come back to, to honesty later. Um, we're, we're robust. We challenge. We, we are tough with um, ourselves and our clients and our employees. But we're also supportive, our fourth value. So we look to support each other and we look to support our clients and make sure that we are looking after their best interests. And for us, those four values with that simple purpose, uh, which came out of uh, working with Watering Can Works, have been the decisive force in helping us to, to work out who we are and how we grow. So in the past two years, we've gone from five people to 12, not a huge growth, but for us that's a fairly substantial growth of our team. We've gone from uh, about 15 clients to over 100 clients. Um, this has been a substantial uh, growth plan, and I'd like to be able to stand here and say, and we did it brilliantly, and it was all because we had uh, a purpose and values, but we've made a whole lot of mistakes along the way. Um, we've had to make a lot of tough decisions along the way. We have recruited hard, and a point being made about recruiting people who believe in what you believe. We try and do that with customers, we try and attract clients who believe what we believe, and we try and attract employees who believe what we believe. Um, that's not always easy, and we've put job ads up that probably haven't been completely honest about what we expect, not out of uh, any kind of malice, but because it's easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day <coughs> running the business. Um, good example, we've just had to get rid of a, a guy from the business. Uh, horrible thing to do, not something I enjoy at all. Um, but it came to the point where it was clear he didn't believe what we believed, and the best thing to do wasn't to carry on trying to make around uh, Peg's fifth and a square hole or vice versa, but was to face that honestly. And I'd like to say I had an email just before um, we came back from the break to say he's got a new position. He's still with us at the moment, by the way. We're managing him out in a positive way. He's got a new position. Absolutely the right thing for him. Absolutely the right thing for us. And it fits with our values. We've helped him find something that's right for him because we're not. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't be afraid of saying no to potential clients, potential employees, or indeed existing clients or existing employees if we discover that over time things grow apart. That's a really important principle for us and it's something that, um, that's become a galvanizing uh, 
tool for every decision we make. We, we have a business plan, we have a strat set of strategies, we have a set of activities and things that we do week in, week out, month in, month out, and over the year. But an awful lot of the time, things pop up, and the conversation point that comes back to everything is, is this materially going to help our clients understand their business better? Is it going to humanise that data? If it's not, if they're asking us to do something which is repeating the same old, same old in a slightly different way, or um, paying lip service to what we believe in, we simply don't do it. Now again, I'd like to say we never do it. Um, life's not quite like that. You know, we do ha wake up sweating about cash flow. We do, in the end, take on things that are not 100% aligned to that. And I can say with absolute um, certainty that the times I wake up in the night sweating about worrying about the business all come back to integrity. However I look at it, I'm worrying about things that aren't aligned to the business. I'm worrying about the things that I have or haven't done that are causing me grief because I've taken on work that doesn't fit with the business's objectives, that the, the humanising data perspective. Um, and every time we do it, we don't do it very often, I'm glad to say, the purpose works well, the values work well, and we do stick by them in all conscious decisions, but inevitably things pop up and you do things and you realise afterwards that perhaps they weren't the right decision. Uh, and it's those things I worry about. Those are things that uh, eat me up, um, are poor decisions made where we've decided to <coughs> veer away from core values. So for us, um, having a clear purpose, getting to that purpose through agreement as a team and aligning that with values and using those values and that purpose to decide upon the clients we engage, the projects we take on, the products we build. We've launched a completely new product in the last uh, six months um, and a new version of it in the last eight weeks. That's come about because it helps our clients to humanise data. It helps us to help them understand their businesses far better by taking the data that they have every day and turning it into something far more meaningful and far more interesting that helps them to make better decisions and do a better job. Um, so a sense of purpose, uh, a collection of values that are easily understood and sticking to it. Uh, integrity in, in actually sticking to it is tough. I, I don't know whether Jack and Mark find it but, uh, the same, but it's not always easy to stick to it. But whenever you don't, those are the things that you end up regretting and those are the things that I end up worrying about whenever we do, even if it sometimes feels wrong at the time. We've turned down client projects where I've thought, you know, it was a big pot of money. There was a, a lovely client name there. We really should have gone for it. But a month on or three months on, I nearly always look back and think, wow, so glad we didn't get involved in that because we wouldn't have been able to do this, which was much more interesting and the kind of thing we're looking to do. And uh, we, would have felt, we would have felt awful about it. We would have ended up doing something we simply didn't believe in. Uh, and I would, I would encourage all of you to, to, to look in your organisations for a purpose that you really believe in, that you can align the business around, and a set of values that, um, that you can guide the business by. It's made a big difference to us. Thank you very much. <laughs>